The Victim Witness Advocacy Program is an office that is within the Commonwealth Attorney's Office. It is comprised of a director and approximately six to eight advocates who are uh, individuals who work with the victims and witnesses in the criminal process. Because everybody in the system has a job to do. From the police, so the investigators, they need to make sure they are out there solving the crimes, doing the investigation, getting the witnesses prepared. And the Commonwealth Attorney's Office job is to uphold the laws of the Commonwealth and prosecute these cases. So we're there to assist the victim. So the victims aren't left out there without anybody to explain everything to them. To let them know when somebody's arrested, um, to let them know when they get a bond hearing, to let them know when the court dates are, and give them all the information that they need to try to help them recover as best we can for such horrific events that happen when you're a victim of crime. But they're also very important individuals in dealing with the families during violent crime situations and dealing with victims, even just maybe holding their hand through the process, sitting with them during court, or just being the person that a victim or a family or witness can call on 24-7, day and night. Enrico Victim Witness provides services to victims of all felonies and violent misdemeanors. And when we say all felonies, we're talking about we work with victims of rape, robbery, murder, um, abduction, human trafficking, malicious wounding, unlawful wounding, domestic violence. We, we don't treat one crime any different than another. All people that are victims of these crimes in Henrico County are people that we provide services to. The Virginia Legislature recognized the importance of respecting both victims and witnesses during the criminal process system and passed what has been called a Victim's Bill of Rights. What that allows uh, victims and the family of victims to know is that because they are an instrumental party to the criminal process system, they have the right to know when certain things are happening in court. I often say that I don't know what prosecutors would do without having these advocates. They are just very instrumental in helping prosecutors work with families. Often prosecutors are uh, tasked with looking at crimes from a very neutral standpoint and often cannot let the emotions of a very horrific event taint their view on how to proceed with a criminal case. The advocate, however, can be that person who can be the emotional person that a victim can rely on. So to have victims and witnesses be comfortable with the process, it is a, it's a multi-team effort, and that's why it is in, the advocates are invaluable and very much a part of the team, along with prosecutors and investigators. Back in 1991, uh, I was assigned to the homicide unit uh, with Henrico County Police Department. Uh, during that time, uh, uh, our job was basically to work violent crimes. Uh, violent crimes uh, incorporated uh, robbery, rape, and, and the murder. Unfortunately, there were times that we were so engrossed in trying to get our job done and find out who did what and why it was done that we forgot about our, our victims. Uh, the victims uh, were the parents and, and the family of the loved one who was lost. Victim witness really played an important part in, in trying to get a connection between the police department and the family of the victim. Unfortunately, back in 2009, um, December the 9th, um, approximately 5.40 a.m., I got a phone call. I learned on that date that my only son had been shot. He took life uh, very, very serious. He had just recently got engaged to a young lady. Uh, he had a three-year-old daughter by her, and they were planning to get married, uh, actually the summer prior to his death. I. Um, now became a victim, not the police officer. Um, 
And one of the things that helped me get through that very traumatic situation was the victim witness program. A lot of times uh, being on the police side, I didn't see this firsthand. I did so as a victim. Uh, my family was always kept updated on certain incidents uh, about the case, whether we were going to trial, whether the case was going to be continued. They really, really um, put their hearts into it. We cried together. Uh, we've, we sit down the day of the sentencing and we all hugged, uh, we said a prayer, um, and, we, and we all shared that tear. Uh, um, uh, and I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. It's like a foreign language to some people. It's fast, it's technical terms, and a lot of people don't understand it until we have the ability to sit down and explain it to them. Well, you have to be good with people, you have to be compassionate, you have to not judge, you have to understand the process of grief and the process of victimization. We try to get in touch with somebody as soon as a crime happens. Sometimes it's that day, sometimes it's the next day, sometimes it takes us several days till we get the information. But especially when it comes to families of homicide victims, there's nothing more traumatic than the sudden loss of somebody at the hands of another. And so those people, when they're left there after the notification, need somebody to help them and steer them and walk them through. Well, well, our first encounter with the criminal justice system basically was 18 years ago, and that was when our son, um, Vance Michael Horn Jr., was murdered. Um, he was um, um, murdered by um, a thief, someone who wanted and did steal a gold necklace from his cousin, and he was shot in the face during that robbery. It was like you can't breathe, uh, you can't move, your days are different. Um, I had to work and I was like walking in a trance. I needed help, I needed help real bad. And I always say that if it had not been for uh, the victim support group with Henrico, I would have really lost my mind. I truly would have. And and they, made, they made it so that you know we were very comfortable being there, even though it was at a traumatic time in our lives but uh, with their assistance, by making us aware of what was going to transpire, they made us very comfortable, feel very comfortable. We were so devastated um, by our son's death that I, I didn't even care whether I lived or died. That's how hard it was uh, for us. Um, and I cannot tell you how long it was before um, I began to see a little light of day. Henrico Victim Witness, this is Dion speaking. I am an advocate in Henrico Victim Witness and I mainly help domestic violence victims go through the court process. Pretty much every Monday there is a domestic violence docket and I would say um, maybe 20, 15, 20 cases on that docket. I feel like people in domestic violence situations do not feel safe. A lot of times they've been abused for so long that they don't know how to advocate for themselves. I like helping people. I do. I couldn't imagine going through the court process. I couldn't imagine, especially if it's a family violence situation. And so we just help them by, you know, telling them to take deep breaths to focus on just telling their story. On March 22nd, 1996, I was stabbed by my ex-husband 40 times in my upper chest and face and head. Apparently, that night, he wanted us to try to reconcile things and just be a little family that night. And I said, I can't do that. I already made plans with my friends, so I'm just dropping her off and I need to go now. And that's when I, I started walking towards the door. My ex-husband turned me around and 
grabbed me by the throat and just squeezed so hard that apparently I passed out right there at the front door. Our daughter was in the room with my husband and I. I vaguely remember um, my ex-husband saying, go find mommy's keys, go find mommy's keys. And when she, she was running all over the house, looking for the keys, and he had ran to the kitchen and got a big serrated bread knife and came back and started stabbing me. And I heard her yelling, don't sword mommy, stop swording mommy. And he said, I will when, once you find the keys, go find the keys. So she was running all over the house frantically looking for the keys and he was stabbing me. Apparently they found the keys and left, took my car and left. Lisa was stabbed multiple times and left for dead by her husband. He then abducted their small child and left the state. I met Lisa the first time when she was um, at MCV Hospital, not very conscious, and her family within um, 24 hours of the time that she was stabbed and continued to keep her updated. There was a manhunt that was out there. Um, he had to be hunted down. America's Most Wanted did a special on her ex-husband trying to find him and their little girl which he was found in one state and his little girl was left by him in another state when he fled after America's Most Wanted did the reports. And we assisted in making sure that the police officer, there was a police officer that went down and got her and brought her back. Because I feel like I was given a second chance and... I think you were already somebody when it happened. You just became a different somebody. Because it took a lot to survive what you did. Shelly Schumann Johnson was assigned to me in my hospital room as my domestic violence advocate. So she, she walked me through the whole process. And she told me about lots of programs that I had no clue about. Actually, there was even programs that I didn't even know about that they would help you pay for your medical bills if this was through no fault of your own. She walked me through that process. They just have many, many programs that the normal person out there wouldn't know about or even think about if they were abused. 20 years later today, I still call her about different things and she answers my questions. My favorite part about our job is seeing somebody at their worst, seeing them through their trauma, seeing them through the criminal justice process, which is hard, long, and drawn out, and then seeing them survive. In the past years we've worked with over 5,000 new victims and witnesses of crime in Henrico. That's not including the people that have victimized in past years that we are still working with currently. And we keep in touch with a lot of our victims. As long as you need our services, we're going to provide those services.